How about yep. I'll set up Big KT. Oh, Kalthazad. I love Kalthazad. Fuck. So yeah. actually, it turns out Kalthazad <laughs> did not always serve the Jailer. Uh, now, of course, this entire thing with KT, we had no fucking idea about any of this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. are we getting this lore in-game by the story of the game they're telling? No. No, because the, the whole way they set it up is you kind of just had to assume, well, I guess KT was sort of in in this for a long time. Yeah. Does that make things make yeah. sense? Awesome. What's going on? Hmm? Yep. Um, but, you know, we don't know either way. Um, it's not in the in-game story. Um, but no. So KT has been uh, has been brought up. This is an interview with uh, Steve Denuser and Morgan Day on the topics of world building and character motivations in yeah. the Shadowlands. Oh, boy. Yep. Definitely need the pocket whiskey for that one. <laughs> um, so how about I just hop over to KT? Yes. Where is KT? There he is. Where's big KT? There he is. Right. You set up. You, you, oh, Matt. Mm -hmm. Tell us what the crack is at KT. Yep. So a lot of what we thought was the point of Kel'Thuzad and his encounter in the Sanctum of Domination was that he had actually been the big brain the whole time, playing along with all of the Arthas, all of the Ner'zhul, all of the Dreadlords, but he actually had the big thinker turned on, and he was in communication with the Jailer, or something to that effect. Because the Cult of the Dam were very interestingly engaged with all of the um, the necromancy stuff. They were they were the reason the whole thing started. They were the Scourge. They were number one of the, you know, the Jailer's attack to take Azeroth. No. No, it's fine. A, he didn't. It was all Denathrius. Denathrius, he, he was he was actually just following Ner'zhul. And then when he died, because he, I mean, he, here's the quote, I guess. Denathrius funded Kalthazad with anima, which was in short supply due to the drought. And that was, the way that was said in the, um, in the actual interview was kind of like he was, because uh, Katie died well, he's a Lich, he died a couple times, but he died for the last time in Wrath of the Lich King. At least the last time we knew, he fired him off into the into the uh, proverbial sun. And apparently then Denathrius filled him full of anima, and that's what led him to be the, you know, to rise to his power. But that, that doesn't really add up too much, because what was he doing in all the time? Because we know the drought started in Legion, right? The drought started after after Argus died, because we know how, we know we know that for certain now. That's the event that took out the Arbiter. Which means Kel'Thuzad was chilling in Aldraxxus doing nothing. And then the drought started, and then Denathus is like, yeah, let's go. But it just doesn't make any It doesn't make any sense based on I can't remember his um Yeah, it's yeah, it is technically true. The De the Revendreth were feeding anima to Maldraxxus. That was like you, we find all the red anima there, but it's just the timeline doesn't add up. They need to be able to tell us this story. They need to be able to explain to us what's going on because this is really important to how Kel'Thuzad, the character that was you know key with Arthas, he was key with Ner'zhul, and they just didn't tell us. And his ugh. so I I actually never get too mad because. I guess he spent time climbing and influence in Maldraxxus. Yeah, he absolutely, definitely, he, he sort of did that, but the timeline of it's all kind of, kind of nonsensical, like it's a cliff note, like it's un undesigned, it's just a cliff note, it doesn't matter. They didn't think about it too hard. But, Kel'Thuzad, I, the reason I get mad is because we killed Kel'Thuzad and his phylactery was upstairs. He... He basically, he, you know, as far as Elix is concerned, he basically killed himself by fighting us in the room with his phylactery. And that's a case where they really need to reconsider everything they're doing if they've got this thing going on where they're like, we have to get the plot from here to here. And this resolves all of these characters. There's more uh, in this interview later about this as well, by the way. We have to resolve all of these characters in the way. And they just leave Kel'Thuzad. One of the greatest characters of World of Warcraft, of, War, of Warcraft, of Warcraft Three, one of the most interesting characters, the one who played everyone behind the curtain, who was really playing for so many different factors, and they just go, "Yeah, fuck him, he's dead now. He's dead in a fight that is just here's his here's his uh, I guess his uh, Nax fight again, sort of, and it's not really interesting. But same thing they did with Nerzul, same thing they did with the." Uh, Garrosh had a bit of a nice way to go. Same thing they're going to do with Arthas. 
because that's not going to be a satisfying conclusion. We don't know how it'll conclude, but it's not going to be satisfying. Yeah. It's going to be, ha ha, clap everyone, there's Arthas. I recognize that! Wow! Woo! The Lich King! Wow! I saw Luke Skywalker and I clapped! I remember, I remember when my older brother watched the Wrath of the Lich King cinematic, but I was two years of age. I don't know, that doesn't add up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so KT, KT, what have they done to my boy? Not saying that KT was my boy or anything, but, you know, man. Yeah. Big brain character. Yeah. Smart fella that killed the sad. What, what does he do? Just yeah. let us walk into his, uh, I guess, his new house. Uh, just He has his phylactery sitting there in the mantelpiece. Yeah, just go kill him. Oh, oh, there he is. That, anything new, anything interesting, any dialogue that makes sense? No? Do you know what I think That's... it is? If they're not interested in a character, basically, they don't, I don't think, I don't think the current team gives a fuck about anything Matt's ever fucking touched. Then just, and I, then just don't talk with them ever again. I, I know that there is that interview floating around where Mattson yeah. says the chattel answers testament to how much the new team love the lore. Oh, yeah. I have heard through a few back channels that Gee, wow, people are not thrilled. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's a load of bullshit. I've heard one or two things. I mean, I certainly know. Uh, hmm, yes. Um, I mean, but that said, how can you think Kel'Thuzad was a cool character? Like, I mean, how, can you imagine having the gall to do to be doing something called Eternity's End, referencing the it's... end of Warcraft Three, and you do this to Kel'Thuzad? Can you imagine having the fucking gall to think that you can do that? Right. <sighs> can you imagine showing so much fucking disrespect to past people's work? And uh, to, to audience investment, you know? The more I think about Eternity's End, the more I feel like I'm going to go fucking feral. Like, it's just, what do you what do you mean, dude? What do you I mean? Wanna, oh, you're just fucking running around with all fours. You yeah. got claws. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go so insane. I'll main feral, dude. Oh. oh. I mean, it's, it's, like, if that's the intent, then I don't, I hope it's cynical. Because if it's not cynical then they think that they're doing Warcraft 3 and World of Warcraft justice by doing this. Oh, yeah. And if they are, yeah. if they, if they, if anyone of the team genuinely thinks that, please tell me and I can arrange help. Like, because you clearly fucking need no, Matt, it. Matt, no, we haven't, we haven't secured the sponsorship deal with BetterHelp yet. We can't do that. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Yeah, that was mean. That yeah. was genuinely mean. But, you know, yeah. why not? Why not have some fun? Uh, yeah, I just, man. Okay, so I assume... Oh yeah, the Anima Drought timeline, that's all very interesting. Yeah, there's um, ways to write around that, but it's like it's like I was saying when you're away, it's just a cliff note. They just went, eh, Anima Drought, eh, Denath just helped them. Be like, did KT not show up in the Shadowlands and go, whoa, who's running this fucking show? I want to be them. I mean, maybe he did, who knows? We'll never know. We'll never know because they didn't do anything. They didn't make a game. You know, there's, I, there's like show don't tell. But usually when people say show, don't tell, they're talking about like, uh, you know, what would you call it? Uh, exposition. Oh, yeah. This <laughs> is an interview. <laughs> this is an interview. <laughs> yeah, like, this is so beyond show, don't tell that show, don't tell barely even applies to this. Yeah. Because at least the don't tell that people reference in show, don't tell is a character speaking. Yeah. Um, I suppose in that. <laughs> as yeah. As, so. as opposed to the word of God. But like, oh yeah, hey, oh yeah, you're confused about a plot point that we didn't have time to put in the game. Here's, I guess, what it is. No explanation required. No further uh, no further explanation. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, they failed in the show. They failed in the tell. So now they have to explain. Yeah. I guess that's that. Yeah. It's weird. Oh yeah. That's our job. Yeah. Like, shit. If they start showing, don't tell them, we, we'll be out of a job. Yeah. Never mind. Don't change a thing. Yeah. The thing that's really weird is they, like, they understood that in Legion. But, well, I suppose this is a bit different. Where they showed, like, some key parts of the artifact stuff, the artifact quest, as you went through them. But then, you know, you had the lore books in the order halls that explained to you the story and you unlocked them as you went. What? Where's that reward? Where's that intrinsic reward of learning more about the weapon that you're using? And that was a case of, we know you don't have time to show that, so you have to tell us, because you're not going to be able to show us, here's the history of Stromkar the Warbreaker. Here's all the cool stuff that happened in Arathi back in the day, and this is how it got here. Or, you know, the same for, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, Tears Hand, the Silver Hand. They can't show you all of that stuff and be like, yeah, we can't literally make a quest for all this, but we can tell you. Yeah. They haven't even done that with Kel'Thuzad. They've just went, fuck you, you don't care, we don't care, whatever. And then 
someone's like, what about characters? Oh, yeah, we've, we, we, well, we'll get into it shortly, but yeah, like, character motivations, we know it. Where all. this comes from is, I remember falling in love with this world when I was a kid. Yeah. And now you've made me feel stupid. And I don't like that you've made me feel stupid. You've made mm. me feel like a fucking fool. Yep. And I, I mean, even worse than that, the interview that I did before patch 9.1, where the likes of KT and Nerzul were covered, yeah, led to me being excited about something and hyping up my audience about something. This is what you fucking did. Yep. So because of that, like, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to need to see some uh, fucking proof. Uh, I'm going to need some goddamn proof that they can do these things well in the next expansion before they're even allowed to have my platform, frankly. Yeah. Yep. That's the thing. We're actually really healthy. You know, we don't need to suck up. <laughs> We're a really healthy, well-diversified organization. Mm-hmm. We don't need to suck up. No. We don't need it. Nope. You know, it has to be earned. And, uh, you know, when you do all these things to try to get me excited about Kel'Thuzad so I can be excited about Kel'Thuzad to the viewers, and you get me excited about Ner'Zul so that I can be excited about Ner'Zul to the viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, don't, don't do a wink-wink, nudge-nudge if you're going to do Ner'Zul like that, my dudes. You <laughs> know? A, here's a set of armor with mechanics that don't even play to, well, to his suffering, but don't really play to anything he did as a character. Yeah. And now he's gone. No yep. potential anymore. Yeah, now he's gone, and they're just gonna, you know, unless they've unless they've got something insane lined up, which I don't. Maybe they do. Maybe they have an old soldier for Arthas, and they're going to do it outside of the game because they don't have the time to do it in the game, or the room to do it in the game, or the ability to do it in the game. But if 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 the Anduin encounter goes how it did in the PTR, and that's it, and it's like, yeah, Arthas is gone. Jaina goes, oh, Arthas, I love you. Goodbye. If that's it. I'll they actually they should basically be sued for the Shadowlands existing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's like the Council of Ricks for creativity has to like stage a fucking intervention. Yeah, 